What made you decide to go to an HBCU? I play, played volleyball. I went on my visits and all the other schools were up north. I went to a predominantly black high school, so like it wasn't like weird. Do you think more white people should go to HBCUs? I don't think that more white people should go because there are other options. HBCUs were made to be like a safe space for black people. Because black people can go to PWIs, so like if they wanted to, they could. I feel like people either try too hard to like act black or they're just like pushing their racist ass views. I don't think you can be racist to white people. I feel like you have to be a minority, you have to be like oppressed to be able to be racist towards them. Do you feel like going to a majority black college changed you in any way? I, I don't know. So HBCUs were actually made before the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that outlawed segregation to provide African Americans with higher education at a time where they couldn't attend white institutions. And so even though historically black universities today allow people of any color to join, should white people especially be allowed? Because does that go against the principles of diversity and inclusion? But at the same time, could this also be seen as a form of segregation? And so today I'm visiting Xavier University of Louisiana, a HBCU with a majority black population to ask both black and non-black students what they think. So I wanted to start out by asking a white student at an HBCU what it means to belong. And so I guess we go and see. Hey, what was your name again? Maddie. Maddie, again, yeah, nice to meet you. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little bit, honestly. Yeah, I guess we kind of just started <laughs> with like a camera in your face, so. They're kind of, they're, okay, they're cooking, they're having like a little cookout. Oh, perfect, so perfect. there's other people. <laughs> Hello, hello. Nice to meet you all. Hello. I'm Gen. Wow, oh my god, you guys are chefing it up in here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna ask her questions on why she's the only white person at the school, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm Maddie, I'm from Dallas. I'm a senior. First question is like, what made you decide to go to an HBCU? I played volleyball. I went on my visits and all the other schools were up north. Minnesota, New York, Pennsylvania. Okay, so it seems like the big part of it was like weather. Did you have like hesitancy around that before you know you decided to join? Honestly, I went to a predominantly black high school. So like, I didn't really give a It wasn't like weird. Yes, thank you for you. My dad told me I was gonna get pregnant. My mom, she just wanted me to go to school in Texas, but like, she just didn't like that part. They swear to God I was gonna end up with a black man, but I got a, I got a white boyfriend, so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you were like more used to like an environment where you were primarily surrounded around black people, but did you experience any culture shock going to an HBCU? I learned that people are raised different. I didn't have a roommate, but like I called her my roommate, she lived next to me. She didn't like shower as much as she should. And she didn't, she didn't really know what outside clothes were. I'm curious, like, what are some of like the challenges you face as being a white person at a black college? I, I don't think I do. I feel like I'm cool with everybody, but my teammates that are also white, they're like international white and they're like, people say like, we don't belong here. They just like look at us crazy. I don't think you can be racist to white people. So I feel like you have to be a minority. You have to be like oppressed to be able to be racist towards them. They be trying to make me say the N word. <laughs> are you serious? Yes. <laughs> You guys have tried to force her to say the N-word. Is this? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Has she said it? No, 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 she's yeah. never said it. She said she... Not four years of knowing her. Four years? Not, not, not slipped up. We have a song that we sing, they play at every party, and I say the N-word for her. So every Friday we have Live Music Friday, and we have a DJ, we have music. Our organizations, they pass out like food or giveaways, um, give out information, things like that. Is this hosted by the school, or is it just like, yeah. oh, it's hosted by the school? Yeah, definitely hosted by the school, and they provide pretty much all the resources you want. I feel like with HBCUs, they make it an effort to make you feel like you're at home. Specifically, us being black, it's not done for us at PWI. So we'll revisit the white student, but before we do, we need to understand why HBCUs are recruiting non-traditional students in the first place. And it comes down to one thing, money. Because when the majority of Xavier undergrads receive grants and financial aid, the university needs to make up for their lower tuition costs. So I wanted to ask black students on campus if non-black students should enter into their spaces. I've seen a couple of white students walking by, a couple of Asian students walking yeah. by. What do you guys feel what type of way if more of those students started getting admitted where you guys eventually became not majority black? I think it would defeat specifically the purpose of our school because it was built specifically for Native American and black students. Yeah. HBCU is historically black it's not like it still has to be black if they want to come here you feel what i'm saying they can come like it's not that big of a deal while it's nice to have it culturally diverse i would like to see that more from a marginalized community so like bringing in more people of color if we are to open that up but if it's not then you know keeping maintaining you know the culture identity the culture isn't having all black kids just having black kids here in general because the culture changes every year 
So I'm curious, do you feel like you feel more free here to express yourself, to be yourself? Oh, 100%. Talking to like some of my classmates, I can have open discussions about it with anybody that I want to. And like nobody's going to like pop off at me or something like that. Does going to an HBCU make you more proud to be black? In a way, yeah. I appreciate my culture. Did you grow up in an environment where it's mostly black people too? Well, for me, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, so I, I really only see black people. Since I'm like from the north, I also was in Catholic school all of my life. I didn't really have that many black people, so I was kind of like code switching. So I've heard of that term before. What does code switching mean? Changing your personality, the way you talk, the way you dress to like appeal to like a certain audience. So by this point, I've interviewed hundreds of people and I've gotten so many insightful answers and I feel like I'm getting way more value than I've been able to give back to them. So what I want to do is I want to give back too. What do you guys think is like the perfect gift? If you know the person and it's thoughtful. Something that they really, really want and that is very thoughtful, something that's timeless. I like jewelry. Something I can use. Does it make you feel good when they like use the product that you like got them? And the fact that they're using it means more. Do you have like a significant other or someone? My wife. It's like always very hard to come up with like the right gift for like Julie. Cause like what the hell do girls like, right? Like, I don't know. It is, it is. You know, yeah, me, yeah. Like, whenever I have to like think about gifts, definitely a struggle. Do you struggle with that? Oh, so much. So yeah, much. right. So that's why I wanted to sponsor and partner up with Holzkern. I got some free gifts for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and similar to my mission that they're also inspired by humans, I thought they were different from any other accessory brand. All their men and women products are made with natural materials from their watches, bracelets, and necklaces. You think your girlfriend will actually like this? Yeah, I believe. It's an early Christmas present. Uh, <laughs> it's a unique one. I never see something like that before, and I like the stone in the middle. So then, I think this take, takes care of like birthdays for like the next couple of years. Yeah, I hope. I hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and since my girlfriend lives in Brazil, it even makes it easy for me to find the right gift for her. If you know her, she's picky. So that's why I partnered with Holzkern to make it easy for you to give the perfect gift this holiday season. So use my code GEN15 or my link in description to get 15% off all products. You'll have free worldwide shipping as well as guaranteed shipment by Christmas Day if you order by December 20th. So now, we'll see by the end of the video if they really like the gifts. So it's clear that opinions vary, but it remains unclear on whether the concept of belonging should be inclusive to individuals within the same color or open to everyone. But perhaps the answer could be found in another campus in the same city. New Orleans is one of the few major cities with a majority black population. So it's no surprise that Xavier is also majority black. But is that the case in the university down the street? Tulane University is what some refer to as a PWI or primarily white institution and has a clear majority white student body with 61% compared to 9% black people. And not only that, the endowment at Tulane University is nearly 10 times that of Xavier University, reaching almost 2 billion. From the surrounding area to the campus itself, you can definitely feel the difference. Because y'all, I ain't gonna lie, Tulane is nice as f and so I was curious to ask students from the PWI and HBCU and compare their experiences. Did you ever consider like an HBCU during your application process or anything like that? No, not really. The funding's not as good. Quality of education isn't isn't there. Tulane had more resources and it just seemed like a better opportunity at the time. I didn't want like my parents to have to worry about paying for like tuition. And not a lot of HBCUs like offer money. Did you always want to go to an HBCU? Oh yeah, 100%. It was always HBCU or nothing. Because I was around predominantly white people most of my life and so I really want to come and find people like me and I also want to learn more about just like being African-American because there's a lot of things I didn't know so I feel like I did learn it here. Since I was younger I definitely always wanted to go to an HBCU. I think it's important for me because I find value within being surrounded by people who look like me and uplifting the community from the inside out. Our department is completely black. All of our professors are black. When you have a black professor they know what opportunities you're missing out of on because of your skin color so they know what to hand to you and what rooms to put you in. What do you think is the biggest hindrance to opportunities, race or income? Income. When you're in a low income family, you know, press is high, like you could have more access to tutoring, things like that. So I would probably say income. For me personally, I think income. My color has to do with a lot of things. You could be smart and go somewhere and still be black or a person of color. So. Based on your environment going growing up in high school or whatever and then now coming here, was it like a big culture shock for you? There's a lot of different black people here, all from different places. So I did find people like me and then I found people from other places. So no. Some white students have been segregated and placed together as roommates. Wait, wait, wait. So white students were all being placed in a specific building? In campus and on the same floor. Isn't that racism? 
I think it definitely is racism, but I honestly think it depends on who requested that. When you look around, that's really all you see for real, just a bunch of white people, but it's nothing wrong with that. They're cool. I'm not gonna lie, some days I do wish I went to a school where it was more black people, but oftentimes I find myself enjoying the resources that a PWI has. And so what the various experiences show is that there are diverse challenges on being a minority in a specific population. And so if that's the case, could a white student even fully grasp the challenges of being a minority even at an HBCU. Do you guys think more white people should go to HBCUs? Not really. No, no. no we like our white friend. We like her. <laughs> That's a hit? I feel like, I don't know. Oh, sh No, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that more white people should go because there are other options. They pay for my school. Like that's why I came here really because they pay for my school. But like if there was like another like PWI, I probably wouldn't went to them. Do you think like HBCUs should prioritize embracing their identity or do you think they should embrace like greater diversity in their institutions? I think their identity honestly. HBCUs were made to be like a safe space for black people and I know <laughs> I know I'm like in their safe space. Are you less proud to be white after going to an HBCU or has it made you more proud of who you are? There could definitely be negative connotations towards being a white person, but I feel like people either try too hard to like act black or they're just like pushing their racist views. And like that's really the problem. You just be a normal person. And if you live in America, it's something that we've all heard. And look, I'm no saint because I've said stuff like that too. Whether it be labeled as something that white, black, or Asian people do, what does acting a certain race even mean? So what do you think it means to act white? Acting white is kind of being all proper, not really showing too much of like, I don't I don't want to say it because it's going to sound bad, but like personality. I feel like that's such a stupid term. You can't act a race. You can act ghetto and you can act prissy, but you can't act white. Have you ever been accused of acting white? I don't think you can act a race. I think race is a construct, but I don't agree with that. I mean, yes, I have. <laughs> Probably going to Tulane doesn't help either. <laughs> My personality is fun and just being happy. Yeah. That, that's not white or black, but you know, it could be seen as something because you get along with them. And so if one can be accused for acting like a race, what does it say about how we view each other? Because while racism persists in discussing race is important, is it still productive or progressive to consistently view everything through the lens of race today? And I can already see the comments of you're literally an Asian making a video on the topic of race. But again, consider this. What will the future look like if wokes and racists are saying the same thing now? Because as of this year, affirmative action was deemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. And so what effects will that have not just on PWIs, but for HPCUs? I guess it remains to be seen. But whether one supports or opposes the decision, isn't having equal access to people with similar experiences, along with exposure to different perspectives, still the best way towards becoming a well-rounded person? But again, is that being lost? So it seems like the consensus is that it's very important to be around people that share like your same culture. Do you guys also think that you can also make the argument that being around different people is also like a big strength and you can get like a lot out of it than just maybe only sticking around people that look like you. People that look like you go around people that do things like you. Sometimes you may see more black people doing a certain thing, so that's why it gears you towards being around them. Whereas you might not see a white person doing that. You learn something from everybody, whether it be like good or bad. That is pretty cultured. I'm not gonna lie. Like we don't. It's it's not like babysitting a white person. She fits right in, and it's not like we had to create a like a black version of her. She's just her herself, and we love her as. Is. Because if equality is possible, it's never through fear. Instead, it's about looking inwards and having conversations with people that you may disagree with. Because I personally learned the most by doing so. Whether they've changed my mind or I've developed stronger arguments on my own views. And when we can all start questioning everything with respect, that, that's the mission of exploring the unfamiliar. Thanks for watching and like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content where I turn street interviews into investigative journalism. And if YouTube gets it right, then you'll like this video too.